Francine. Happy birthday. Zootopia is out and live on Disney Plus, and we couldn't be more excited about this expansion to the movie that decided to take a spin on the least shown side of the story. The side of secondary characters and their lives. In Zootopia Plus, we'll be seeing a series of short episodes that occur at the same time the movie is, but we'll see them from fresh new eyes and a new perspective to remind us that there are stories all around and everywhere we look and how each person's life really matters. For my little boy. You want the red or the blue, pal? The train trip is like an introduction, just like the first time we traveled to Zootopia, but a little bit different. This time, it passes through the ice biome of the city, and in a blink and you miss it moment, we see a couple of little elephant girls dressed as Elsa and Anna from Frozen. Okay, we saw this before, but they show it from another angle. What's totally new in the scene is that we can see Finnick and Nick making their knockoff popsy paws using the snow in the ground to ice them. Yeah, it's not very hygienic of these guys. That's why health regulations and business regulations exist, guys, so you don't end up eating popsicles frozen on the dirty ground. But perhaps the most notable bit of this episode comes in the form of a very adult joke that can totally go over the kids' heads, and if it doesn't, well, it can spark some interesting family conversations. You see, after Bonnie and Stu manage to rescue their kid, number 270-something from the train, the two bunnies kiss and Bonnie says, baby, be so far so good until you hear Stu's response and understand where he's going. He says, relax honey, we're just beginning. Bonnie's face says it all, but no Stu, no one here was talking about the reproduction speed of rabbits. We all know it's a lot. Sorry, coming through, excuse me, excuse me, pardon. And talking about knockoff brands created from real examples, we found several ones that made it into the movie in the form of little details here and there. Fru Fru's favorite store, Clawfeld, see the play on words there, right? With Claw, is a parody of the real life super luxurious store called Kleinfeld that has its own TV channel about dresses. On the lower class end of the consumer chain, we also have a couple of brands testing penetration in the Zootopia markets. Target changes its name to tar goat because goat, of course, is another animal dad joke. And on the other hand, Macy's chooses a cuter option of Mousies. Can you find any others across the city? When Fru Fru is in the store trying on dresses, we can see that the place partially shares its design with the princess's room in Ralph Breaks the Internet. They use the same model and basically just change colors in several decorations. The same thing goes for the dresses we see being exhibited and or worn. They are slightly based on the dresses of classical Disney princesses such as Cinderella, Ariel, Bella, Snow White, and Tiana, but they made them different by using only the classical shape of the dress but changing its colors. If you have any doubts about this, you can look for the cape dress in the background and see it's identical to Snow White's. Of course, we'll leave the rest of the homework for you guys, but you can find them if you look for them, we assure you. But this is not the only episode in which they choose to incorporate elements from previous Disney movies. If you take a look at Duke's crown during his musical montage, you'll see it's the same crown worn by Prince John in Robin Hood, which also happens to be a movie populated with an anthropomorphic animals. Over there to the left. Great. Thank you. Oh. That poor little buddy's gonna get eaten alive. If you remember Duke's street work in Zootopia, you know his job was selling bootleg movies on a street stand advertised as Duke's officially licensed movies. In that stand, he has various different jewels, some of which are a reference to Frozen 2, of course. What's interesting here is that Duke showed that bootleg movie even before Frozen 2 was a reality. And he does it again, ladies and gentlemen. In a bit where he shows some of his movies to the camera, we can see hidden in the background, he's holding a movie called Wrangled 2. We'll give you guys a second here. Got it already? This is an unofficial confirmation of a sequel to Tangled. Well, maybe if we want to believe Duke in his past attempts at predicting real sequels. But we already have Tangled the series, which comes after the events of the movie. So we better take this with a grain of salt. We are in a really big hurry. I am on it break. 
There is a scene in which we see Duke stealing money from a poor old goat in the street, and even when we are sure we didn't see her in the movie, she was a planned character for it. But she was eventually left behind to simplify Judy's arc a bit. This elderly goat is called Mabel, and she was going to be in the movie working alongside Judy. You know, putting fines on drivers and writing citations, but on a higher paying than Judy. This is a bit sad if you consider that her role in the movie was originally to present Judy with a vision of what she could become if she kept working parking meters for another 50 years or so. Well, they scrapped the official idea and turned Mabel into a plain old lady goat that needs help to cross the street. This hits hard when the bus comes into play and rams into the goat. But hey, she says she's fine, so let's move on. I get to you, you bunnies. <laughs> so emotional. No, 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 no! Do not let go! The pair of annoying little things are gerbo like a type of hamster to put it easy for you. And just like in the previous case with a goat, they are scrapped of characters from early versions of the Zootopia film. In the original script, they had a role as a minor antagonist, a pair of rascals who enjoyed infiltrating Nick by flattening his tail with their car and teasing him to the point where he lost control of his emotions and the collar around his neck activated to give him shocks. Of course, after rejecting their storyline, the characters were also put away up until this moment. Well played. Now, we can see them in the episode called So You Think You Can Prance. What did you do that made Mr. Big so mad at you? I, um, I may have sold him a very expensive wool rug that was made from the fur of a skunk. If speed dating has been a thing for decades now, we think that the guys working on Zootopia Plus just invented its opposite, slow dating. A date that takes so long and consumes your time and energy in a way you don't even want or need to go on a second one. Good thing these species practice monogamy and little things traditional despite what the name of the animal might suggest. This episode is tightly integrated with the movie's plot because if you remember anything about the sloth, you know he was stopped by the police and received a warning from all of the things going too fast. But now that we see a bit more of his day, we understand that he was speeding after his date and the couple was running late to get to Giselle's concert. You go get her, tiger. But take your time, of course. No pressure. Hello? I'm here to ask you some questions about a case. Then they should have gotten a real cop to solve it. In the movie, we had met the polar bear, who seems to be Mr. Big's most trusted henchman. And in the episode focused on the mafia called the Godfather of the Bride, they explained to us how they met and why they are so close. It all began when Little Big saw the young polar bear overheating in the summer to what Big decided to spend his hard-earned money of the day on ice cream for the bear. Immigrants helping each other out in rough times, you know? From that time on, the polar bear and the other bears return the favor, and together they managed to put an end to the crime in the area. Did you expect a cute story in the mafia? That's how, thanks to Mr. Big and their alliances, the rodents were able to find their place in Zootopia, thus creating little Rodentina. One last cool detail from the episode in the montage in which we see 11 builder mice eating on a naked beam. This is, of course, a wink at that famous photograph that showed 11 construction workers workers having lunch sitting on a beam at 260 meters high without any security measures. But this is not the first time the photo makes it into a movie since it has been previously referenced and enacted by minions in Despicable Me 2. What did you think of Zootopia? Do you think this is a great way to expand its universe or would you rather have a full-fledged sequel soon? We loved the show, but it only left us wanting more. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Anyways, that's all for today's video. Check the rest of our channel for more content about Zootopia Plus and all your favorite animated movies. And of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn your notifications on by hitting that little bell if you want to keep receiving awesome stuff like this. Bye.